Drake May and Jaden Daniels are considered two of some of the top quarterback prospects in the 2024 NFL Draft. And today on the Commander's Report, I'm going to tell you which of these two guys should the Commanders take at number two overall this year as it looks like Chicago is gearing up to take Caleb Williams number one overall. Before we get into their scouting reports and eventually who I think the Commanders are going to take this year at number two overall, make sure you guys stay tuned for which guy I think that they should take. Uh, just so you guys know, we have put out a couple of really good videos here breaking down the whole number one pick Caleb Williams situation. We broke it down yesterday on the show where uh, Adam Schefter says the commanders likely won't be moving up to number one. If you want to check that video out, I'm going to put the link in the comments and description. And then, you know, if you're somebody that wants to know whether Caleb Williams is actually worth the hype, we actually did a scouting report on him. We gave him his own video here on the channel. We did that last week. So if you want that one, you can go ahead and click the link in the comments and description as well. And also make sure you guys click that subscribe button because we're going to have this premium commander's draft coverage all throughout the 2024 offseason. So to never miss a video, make sure you guys click that subscribe button for me right now. So first, let's talk about Drake May, the quarterback out of UNC. Uh, and listen, man, this is somebody that's been uh, rumored and has been projected towards the top of the draft here for a couple of years now. So you look at his profile here. He is 21 years old, so he is on that kind of moldable, kind of younger side of the equation here. His pro football focus grade was over a 90, which is an elite grade. It was 16th in the country last year. And then on pro football focus's big board right now, he is ranked third overall, which is the second overall quarterback. So if you take a look at his stats from last year, uh, the numbers did go down, and this is why some people are projecting Jaden Daniels over Drake May, because May didn't necessarily finish his career in maybe the way that he was he would have wanted. You know, the yards were way less. You know, completion percentage was a couple points lower, way less touchdowns, more interceptions, a lower quarterback rating, all these different things. But the thing that I will say about Drake May here uh, in defense of, of May is that he didn't have the best help at North Carolina. So let's break down the pros here for Drake May. First is his size, 6'4", 229 pounds. That is prototypical uh, franchise quarterback size in the National Football League. No concerns there whatsoever. He's definitely got that size to see over the middle of the field. Number two uh, pro of May's game is that he's got the arm strength, man. Now, I wouldn't necessarily put it in the realm of like Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Justin Herbert, but it's definitely in the higher end of uh, arm talent and arm strength here, uh, where it's probably going to be top 15 in the league the second he, uh, he ends up coming into the National Football League. So very good arm strength as well. And then along with that arm and the size, he's got the athleticism. He can move. He can even run a little bit. Now, he's probably not going to be a, a guy that you really design a run game around, like a Justin Fields or a Lamar Jackson, but he's definitely a really good athlete, and he can get outside the pocket, and he can, make, he can hurt you a little bit with his legs if you're not accounting for him. Uh, in man coverage. And then also playmaking, something that maybe is something that's maybe a little bit underrated in Drake May's game because Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels uh, and their ability to get outside the pocket. But Drake May has a bunch of really good highlights on his college film, getting outside the pocket, throwing on the run, making creative plays. He's got kind of that playmaker instinct that you look for in the star quarterbacks in the National Football League. That's definitely a strength of his game as well. And then also, something that I really like about Drake May is that he played under adversity at the University of North Carolina last year. The offensive line was one of the worst in the country last year. And then his number one receiver, I mean, just to show you how bad his receivers were uh, at North Carolina in 2023, his number one guy, Tez Walker, was the worst wide receiver at the Senior Bowl. All right. Tez Walker going into Senior Bowl week was being projected by some as a first round pick because Drake May was throwing him the football. Then when he gets away from Drake May and some of the other quarterbacks are throwing him the ball. He's dropping everything. He's not running good routes. He's not winning in man coverage. And it just seems like Drake May completely elevated everybody in that North Carolina uh, 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 you know, locker room and offense this past year, which tells me that he's, he's used to playing under duress. He's used to playing under pressure. He's used to playing with receivers that aren't getting a bunch of separation. And that, I think that's good for his preparation for the National Football League because it's not always going to be sunshine and rainbows. You're not always going to have clean pockets and wide open receivers in the league. You're going to have to face adversity, especially if you're going to be a high draft pick and you're going to one of the worst teams in the league. So that's definitely something I like in Drake May's profile. 
Now, some of the cons here, I got two major cons in this game. Number one, footwork can be a little bit sloppy, all right? It can get a little bit choppy for me. He doesn't really play with fantastic base like somebody like uh, like Caleb Williams plays with or Jaden Daniels plays with. We'll get to his footwork here in a while. But Drake Mays kind of plays more upright, a little bit more bouncy, a little bit of Jordan Love in him. And that's not something that I think is super good for in terms of his accuracy. He's not inaccurate by any, uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but the footwork does lead to some inaccuracies at times, especially down the field. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Overall, it's okay, but it's definitely not a strength of Drake May's game. It's something that he's going to have to work on at the next level. Number two con on my list is touch passing. So you look at some of the best quarterbacks in the National Football League, Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, all the Brock Purdy even, uh, you know, throws with great touch, can throw to the intermediate parts of the field, can layer throws over defenders, uh, and, and in front of the deep defenders, uh, that's a, a strength that a lot of top quarterbacks in this league have, and that's not necessarily something that Drake May uh, does too often. Now, it's not terrible, but he likes to throw that line drive throw instead of that nice little nine iron, you know, that little, uh, uh, you know, that little bit of an arc. He doesn't have a ton of arc on his deep ball either, which leads to some inaccuracies as well. It's harder to catch a flat deep ball than it is an arcing one. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, there are quarterbacks in the league that don't really throw with touch, that are successful. Just look at Justin Herbert, but it is something to keep in mind on Drake May's profile as we approach the NFL draft. And my high-end comp here for Drake May is a light version of Justin Herbert. He's not quite as big. He's not quite, his arm isn't quite as strong, but he plays the game in a very similar fashion to Justin Herbert. Uh, he's, a, he's athletic. He can move, but he's not necessarily a dynamic runner. He's a bigger guy. He's got a strong arm. He kind of has that line drive throw. Doesn't really throw with a whole lot of touch. I mean, the profile here between Drake May and Justin Herbert is very, very similar. So if you're looking for somebody with like 85, 90% of the arm of Justin Herbert uh, that, could, that plays a game very similar than he does, uh, Drake May is probably going to be your guy. But then also the low-end comp here, somebody that's athletic, somebody that has a pretty good arm, all these different things. The low-end comp here is going to be Ryan Tannehill. Now, Ryan Tannehill had some really good years in the league, and the right system there in Tennessee with Arthur Smith calling the plays Ryan Tannehill is a really serviceable NFL starter. So uh, this is probably the low-end comp for me. I do think that the ceiling or is pretty high with Drake May, but also the floor is pretty darn high as well. He sees the middle of the field pretty darn well. He's got a good mental processor on him. Only 21 years old, so he still has room to grow as well. But at the end of the day, man, the, my grade on him is that he's a top three pick. And if Caleb Williams wasn't in this year's draft class, I would absolutely think that this guy would be worthy of the number one overall pick. So at the end of the day, again, my grade, top three in the National Football League draft. If he doesn't go to the Commanders, he's probably going to go to the Patriots at number three. And he's absolutely worth that pick, in my opinion, because he, he mixes the size and the traits and the athleticism and the strong arm that you look for, uh, mixed with like the, the age. You know, He's still moldable. He's very coachable. Uh, everything that I hear on him personality-wise, so he's a great leader and a hard worker. So this guy is definitely uh, franchise quarterback potential here in this league. Now, coming up, we're going to move to Jaden Daniels. I'm going to let you know whether or not the Heisman winner from this year is the better prospect over the Tar Heel signal caller. But before we get into that, let's have a word from our sponsor here at Fanatics. And listen, man, uh, Scary Terry McLaurin is one of the best receivers and definitely one of the more underrated receivers in the National Football League. Our friends at Fanatics are offering you guys a fantastic deal this offseason on this awesome uh, design T-shirt here. It's a Scary Terry McLaurin. He's showing off the guns. Whole, whole thing there, you can go to chatsports.com slash scary to get yourself this awesome t-shirt today. I think this would be perfect to rock at like Commander's training camp next year or during the summer. It's a nice white t-shirt, so it's not going to be too hot in those summer months, but it's also got that awesome design so you can wear it all year round. So go to chatsports.com slash scary. The offseason is the best time to get the best deals from our friends at Fanatics, so you can go right now, chatsports.com slash scary to get your shirt today before they run out in your size. So now let's go to Jaden Daniels here, go over his pros and cons. But before we get to those, let's go over his profile. So he's a little bit older than Drake May. He was a five-year college player, but he's kind of a younger five-year college player where he's only 23 years old. He just turned 23 in December, so he's definitely a young buck for somebody that, went, that was in college for five years, uh, the pro football focus grade was the best in the country. I mean, he did win the damn Heisman Trophy for a reason, man. 94.7, absolutely incredible. And right now, pro football focus ranks him as the 11th overall prospect in the number three 
overall quarterback. So you compare his stats in 2023 to Drake Mays, and you'd, you might be saying to yourself, Jack, what the heck, man? Like, Jaden Daniels is way better than Drake May, all right? But keep in mind when you're looking at these numbers, all right? Drake May had pretty much no help at North Carolina, a bad O-line, receivers that were just subpar at best. Jaden Daniels was working with a really good offensive line that was giving him clean pockets all the time, and then also he had some of the best receivers in the entire country last year with Brian Thomas and uh, uh, Malik Neighbors as his number one and number two targets. I mean, that would be a great one-two combo in the NFL, let alone college football. So, of course, you know, Jaden Daniels throws a really accurate football, over 70% 70, uh, 70 completion percentage. When you just look at the numbers, you're going to say Jaden Daniels is the better QB, but I think if you put them in the same situations, I do think that they're pretty comparable talents. So let's go over the pros and cons here. There's there's a good, a good amount of pros, but there's also some cons here with Jaden Daniels. First one is his frame, and there's a lot to work with here, all right? We'll talk about him having to fill out a little bit here in just a second, but he's 6'4", too, man. Like, he's, 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 a, he's a tall cat, all right? This guy, if he fills out a little bit, that 6'4 frame is exactly what you're looking for in your franchise quarterback in the National Football League. He's going to have no problem seeing over the middle of the field with that height. Number two, and everybody knows this about Jaden Daniels, he is a dynamic Rusher. It was one of the big reasons why he won the Heisman Trophy last year with the Tigers is that, you know, if there wasn't, if Malik Neighbors or Brian Thomas wasn't open, he was able to get outside the pocket and he was able to run. He's got an awesome cut, uh, which really makes him dangerous in the open field. I'm not necessarily going to put him on the same level as Justin Fields right now. I think Fields just is just a tick better than him in the rushing department, but I would absolutely put him in the same category as someone like Lamar Jackson right now and that's definitely saying something with that with that type of quickness and that type of speed this guy's going to be a real real weapon and it actually lowers the bar quite a bit for what he has to do as a passer to be a successful quarterback in this league number three he definitely has a strong arm he can throw it down the field uh, and it's really really a good arm that can throw it 50 60 yards down the field there's no question about that and then not only is his arm strong and can throw it far but it, he also throws with great touch and this is one of the things that he has an advantage over Drake May on is that he throws a better he throws a prettier football right when it goes up there and he's got that nice arc I mean it's super catchable on those deep passes that deep ball is among the prettiest that you're going to ever see uh, which is definitely one of the uh, it's selling points here of Jaden Daniels because he mixes that dynamic rushing ability with that really nice touch pass deep down the field, really catchable deep ball. Uh, it really is a thing of beauty, and his highlight tape is one is really one to uh, behold. It really is great. Then number five, something that I really like and something that might get a little bit glossed over because of the playmaking ability with his legs is the pocket presence and the footwork within the pocket. All right, when he has a clean pocket and he's He's within rhythm. He plays with good base. He, he does a good job getting through his reads, all these different things. I really like that pocket presence, being able to see pressure, feel pressure, get out when needed. Really like what I see from him in terms of that pocket footwork. So really, uh, he's polished in certain degrees for sure, and then he's dynamic in others, which really makes his ceiling sky high. But there are some cons here that make him a potential bust in the National Football League as well. Number one is mental processing. I mean, I, I, I'm sure I, I don't really know if he can do mental processing because he just wasn't asked to do it all that much at LSU. Most of the time, his first read was open, and there was a lot of times where if that first read wasn't open, he would just take off and run. So is he capable of doing it? I don't know. That's why the interviews are going to be important for him. That's why the Wonderlick is going to be important for him. I think, you know, that ability to get from one to two to three to four, a full field progression is going to be big in terms of his evaluation this spring. Number two, vision. So there was some times where he just left meat on the bone. Sometimes there was open receivers down the field, and he, and he passed up to run the football, and that's just not what you want to see from an NFL quarterback. If you've got big chunks down the field that you can take advantage of, you got to be able to pull that trigger, and you have to see that those guys are open. There was definitely too many instances where Brian Thomas and Malik Neighbors got open for him in his line of sight where he decided not to pull the trigger. That concerned me just a little bit. And then, you know, you look at the highlight tape of Jaden Daniels. I, you know, you can, after this video, you can go check out any highlight clip or any highlight uh, edit or reel that you want on, on Jaden Daniels. Count how many times he's ripping like an in-cut over the middle of the field. You're not going to see very many of them. Most of them are slot fades or post routes or just straight up goes from his receivers and they're winning one-on-one. -on -one. 
All right, that's, that's not really how you win in the National Football League from a down-to-down -down basis. You're, you're beating people with mental processing. You're beating them with short game. You're beating them with in cuts over the middle. And Jaden Daniels almost never targets the middle of the field when you look at his heat map. And that concerns me a lot. That was a the big issue with Kyler Murray, with Cliff Kingsbury. Of course, Cliff is the new OC here in Washington. And if he looks at Jaden Daniels' film, he's like, this guy's not ripping wide open digs over the middle of the field. He's not seeing it. Like, do I really want to go with this again? Another quarterback that's not seeing the middle of the field. It's definitely something uh, that the team that drafts Daniels is going to have to develop in his time in the National Football League. Another thing that really concerns me is that he's, he's got that nice frame, that 6'4 frame, but he is definitely skinny, and he takes a lot of big hits on film, man. When he's running, he doesn't really have great awareness of the players around him, and he takes some massive shots. And, you know, the leverage advantage definitely isn't there. Uh, so if he gets a big hit from like an NFL linebacker at his height and at his weight, there's definitely a concern that he's going to have broken bones, that he is going to get injured frequently in the National Football League. And especially if he gets those lower leg injuries with his speed and how much he depends on his athleticism, one injury could be enough to completely make him a bust in the National Football League because it would take away his gift, which is his rushing ability. And then finally, uh, you know, when he's a playmaker outside of the pocket, He's not really looking to pass. Like, uh, same thing with throwing over the middle of the field here. Like, you look at a highlight reel of Jaden Daniels, you're going to see lots of deep passes, and you're going to see lots of times where he's getting outside the pocket to run. You're not really seeing it like with Caleb Williams or Drake May, where he's getting outside the pocket to throw. I don't really think that that's a strength in his game. So, although he does have that dynamic ability to rush with the football when the play breaks down, I'm not too sure about his ability to make plays with his arm outside of the pocket, which is something that Lamar Jackson has really cultivated in his game with the Baltimore Ravens. And that is uh, the high-end comp here, is that Jaden Daniels is a bigger version of Lamar Jackson if he can develop in the same ways that Lamar was able to coming out of Louisville all those years ago. It's what's made him a two-time MVP. And really, Jaden Daniels, his ceiling is higher than Lamar Jackson's, as crazy as it sounds. Now, he has quite a bit to develop, just like Lamar has throughout his career, but he's got the bigger frame. And that's really what gets me excited, is that he could be a bigger, taller, stronger version of Lamar Jackson with a better deep ball. I really do think that his touch on the deep ball is better than Lamar Jackson's, all right? So this guy definitely has that high-end upside. This guy has multiple-time MVP written all over him, but he also has NFL bust written all over him as well. If he's too injury-prone, if he can't stay healthy, if he can't learn to throw over the middle of the field, Jaden Daniels is going to have a really tough time really cultivating himself as somebody that can compete for Super Bowls in this league. Uh, but if he can develop, man, the high-end traits are definitely there for this kid, uh, and it's definitely an exciting prospect heading into this process. Now, the low-end comp is a skinnier version of Justin Fields. And as we know, Justin Fields hasn't really exploded onto the scene just yet. Now, I think Fields is slightly better as a rusher than Jaden Daniels. He's bigger. I think he's slightly faster than Jaden. But, you know, the comp is there. They're both bigger guys. They have bigger frames. They both have really good deep balls, uh, all these different things. And both of them have a tough time seeing the field. So if you don't like Justin Fields, you probably don't like Jaden Daniels' game either because they have a lot of the same strengths and they have a lot of the same weaknesses as well. So my grade for Jaden Daniels, because of that insanely high upside, is a top three pick. All right, plain simply in the National Football League, if you have the opportunity to get somebody like this in your building, somebody that could win multiple MVPs, somebody that could really uh, catapult your team into Super Bowl contention for the next five, six years on his rookie contract, you probably go ahead and take that. Now, it's probably going to be a little rocky to start his career, all right? He still has to develop as a mental processor. He still has to really learn how to become an NFL-level passer of the football, but that high-end dynamic rushing ability is going to lower the bar quite a bit for him in terms of what he needs to do as a passer to really be successful in this league. So he's definitely exciting, but he's definitely risky as well, especially because he's a fifth-year player, he's a little bit older. All these different things contribute to kind of that boomer bust uh, dynamic that he has with his, uh, with, his, with his profile here. So next, I'm going to tell you who I would take between Drake May or Jaden Daniels. Do I go swing for the fences with Daniels, or do I play it a little bit more safe with Drake May? I'm going to let you know here in about 10 seconds, but first, make sure you guys click that thumbs up icon if you're enjoying this content. It really does help out the YouTube algorithm. They're looking for likes because if you click that thumbs up icon, 
that tells them that you're enjoying this content and that they should push this out to other Commanders fans like yourselves. We've been going, growing like crazy here at the Commanders Report, so we really, really appreciate it. If you click that thumbs up icon if you're enjoying this type of content. So for me personally, guys, me personally, I would take Drake May. All right, and the reasoning for that is a couple of reasons. I got four main reasons why I'm going with Drake May. Number one is the age. Okay, now it's not like a massive difference, all right? Like if Jaden Daniels was clearly the better prospect, I would go with Jaden Daniels. But Drake May's 21, Jaden Daniels is 23. Uh, that means once they get into their second contract, the dynamic is a little bit different. Uh, Drake May is going to be getting into his second contract when he's like 25, 26, all right? And he's still going to be just entering the prime of his career. Jaden Daniels, on the other hand, is going to be kind of a rushing quarterback that uh, by the time he gets to his second contract, he's going to be like 27, 28. So it's going to be more of a dynamic of can Jaden Daniels develop enough as a passer by his second contract, whereas I think there's a lot more leeway with Drake May because he's more of a traditional pocket passer. He's more developed as a passer, uh, and he's got more time to grow here. So I'd, I'd say age is important. And also, I do like the size aspect of it here. I do like that the poundage on Drake May is a little bit more. It's more filled out. It's more NFL ready than it is with Jaden Daniels. I am concerned about the injury stuff with Jaden because, I mean, if he gets hit below the belt here, you know, like with his, with his leg or his knee or whatever, and he gets hit really hard, I mean, I'm just not sure if there's enough muscle on him to really protect him from injuries long term in this league. And I'm not sure if he's good enough at protecting himself as a rusher to really prevent those hits. So that definitely concerns me. I want my quarterback for the next decade to be healthy for that, for that period of time. I trust Jake May to stay on the field for longer. Then also, playing under adversity. I mean, let's just face it, guys. Jaden Daniels had one good season in college, and it was with two of some of the best receivers in college football and a really good offensive line. And, you, and Drake May, it's been kind of the opposite, right? It's been bad offensive line play. It's been bad wide receiver play, and he's had to overcome that. And now that he's going to be uh, uh, coming to the commanders, I mean, with a bad offensive line and a, and a team that's really uh, faced adversity, you know, this is somebody that can walk in day one, and he knows what that's like, and he knows how to handle that, and that's something – that attracts me to Drake May. And then fourth, he's got the higher floor, all right? Plain and simply, guys, this is what the dynamic of the situation is here for the Washington Commanders. If you have the number two overall pick here, you're starting a brand new regime, you cannot afford to get this wrong, all right? And Drake May, I think, provides you a really nice base level floor. And he, because he's got the traits, he's also got a lot of ceiling to work with as well. Whereas with Jaden Daniels, it's super high ceiling, but it's also super low floor. All right, in my opinion. So I really do like Drake May uh, because he's got that, uh, you know, that high floor. Uh, he's got the potential to be a really good quarterback. But plain and simply, guys, this has got to be the guy, in my opinion, if you're the Washington Commanders. I mean, I really do think that this guy has the potential to completely turn this team around. He's played in shotgun spread formations uh, in offenses before at, U at North Carolina. So he's a perfect fit for Cliff Kingsbury's offense. Uh, he's somebody that has more time to grow and develop because he's only 21. He's got the size I'm looking for. All these different things contribute to me thinking that the commanders are going to take Drake May, number two overall. However, I wouldn't mind and I wouldn't cry about it. I'd actually be really excited if the commanders ended up taking Jaden Daniels. So if you like that high upside type of guy and you're like, hey, man, we just saw in the Super Bowl, we're going to have to beat a guy like Patrick Mahomes to win championships, and Jaden Daniels has the most talent. Let's take that guy. I understand that reasoning. I really do. And I would be excited if Jaden Daniels is the pick at number two. He's super, super exciting as a runner. He's got a great deep ball. All the things that we laid out today. I mean, he's an excellent prospect. And I, I gave him a top three grade for a reason. But with the Washington Commanders needing to get this right, I don't want to take somebody with as many red flags as Daniels. I think Drake May is a lot more safe, and I also think he's got a nice ceiling to work with as well uh, and could be a potential star in this league. So for me, I'm going to take the safer option. I'm going to go Drake May. But let me know what you guys think down there in the comment section. Pick your quarterback, type DM for Drake May or JD for Jaden Daniels. Let me know down there in the comment section how you're feeling and who you want to be the next quarterback of the Washington Commanders. That'll be it for today's show, guys. Thank you so much for all of your support. Make sure you guys click that subscribe button because we got more premium Commanders draft content coming your way all throughout the 2024 offseason.